Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today uh, we are continuing our discussion in the horizontal gene transfer in bacteria and we are going to see today the third and the final method of gene transfer that is transduction. We have talked about conjugation and transformation in last two videos and the introduction of horizontal gene transfer and all is there in the video of conjugation. If you guys want I will just put the links on the screen to both the videos and you can have a look. So today let's talk about transduction. Now transduction is the third method of gene transfer in bacteria where a bacterial gene is transferred by a virus. Interesting right? Now we might have heard about animal viruses, plant viruses, there are also specific viruses that can infect bacteria and they are called bacteriophages and transduction is a process that occurs as a result of error in their uh, uh, in the viral genome packaging okay. Now to understand this and the process of transduction we should look at couple of points that are very much important and that is the life cycle of this bacteriophage in bacteria. Now this bacteriophage when it infects a bacteria in short I will call it as phage they are also called phage. So when a phage infects a bacteria what happens is they can either show a lytic cycle or they can show a lysogenic cycle. So what are these let's have a look. So the first type of bacteriophage life cycle is called the lytic cycle and what happens is when this bacteriophage infects a bacteria it is going to attach to this bacteria and it's going to release its DNA into the host and this viral genome has the capacity to take over the or take control of the bacterial machinery. It is going to degrade the host chromosome and, and take over the host machinery to produce its own viral particle. So now this uh, infected bacteria is going to produce many copies of the viral particle and, and in the end they will lyse the host cell and they are also going to reinfect some other bacteria. This is a normal lytic cycle. In the end the uh, host is uh, undergoing the lysis and thus it is called lytic cycle. Simple to understand. Now let's see what happens in lysogenic cycle. So what happens in lysogenic cycle this phage would come and infect the bacteria it will release its DNA into the bacteria instead of now taking over the host machinery in case of lysogenic cycle what happens is this viral genome would get integrated into the host genome okay it will become part of the host genome in this case it is going to remain silently as a part of host genome and every time the bacteria divides this viral DNA is also going to get replicated along with the host genome because it is acting as a part of the host genome now there can be a situation when this viral DNA would release back from the host chromosome okay excision will take place and this viral genome will come back and become active and once it becomes active now it will take over the host machinery and and it will follow the same lytic cycle from here on where the host will be forced to produce all the viral particles the viral genome will be replicated uh, bacterial genome would be degraded and once the viral particles are packed there will be lysis of the host and it will uh, release in the environment and again it can go back and reinfect a new host. So the difference over here in lysogenic cycle is it becomes part of a host genome for certain period of time and, and once it is activated it is going to replicate and kill the host and release the virus particles. Now I just said in the beginning that transduction is a process that occurs as a result of an error that happens during the viral genome packaging right. So if you can see viral genome packaging happens in both the cycle lytic and lysogenic because new viral particles are formed they get packed inside the uh, coat and gets released. So based on this now there should be two types of transduction because we have two types of cycle lytic as well as lysogenic. So there has to be two types of transduction occurring based on what cycle the virus is following the type of transduction it is. So now let's start with the transduction process. 
Now, based on the type of life cycle, as I said, there will be two types of transduction. The one is called generalized transduction, and the second one is called specialized transduction. Now, why it is called generalized and specialized? That I will tell you once I'm done with the process, because then it will become easier to understand. So, let's start uh, both of them one by one. Now, the first type of transduction is called generalized transduction that occurs during the lytic cycle of the bacteriophage. Now, we saw lytic cycle. What will happen? The bacteriophage would infect the bacteria, release the DNA inside. This will take uh, over the host machinery and it is going to produce the viral DNA and it will also chop up the bacterial DNA. Now during this assembly phase where the uh, viral particle has to be packed inside the virus, by mistake sometimes the bacterial DNA can get packed into the viral code, okay? because it is just a piece of DNA that is getting packed. So during this packaging of DNA, bacterial DNA fragment can get packed in the viral particle in the viral coat. Now what happens is there is a limitation of this coat to take up the DNA. So once the bacterial DNA if it has been taken up there is no more space for the viral DNA to uh, get in. So these are the particles that have got the bacterial DNA packed in them right. Now what happens, these new phages are also going to search for new host, they are going to uh, attach to the new bacterial cell and release the DNA into the new cell. But now in this case, this is not the viral DNA, this is the bacterial DNA. That means it cannot take over the uh, bacterial machine either. It is not going to actually do anything to the bacteria because it is the DNA of another bacteria itself. So now in this case there can be three outcome of this situation. Number one is uh, we had seen in transformation a piece of DNA has been taken up and that gets integrated into the host chromosome. Same thing would happen here if uh, this genome can integrate into the host chromosome it is going to be part of this uh, bacterial chromosome now. So in this case it is going to be successful gene transfer because now it is a recombinant bacteria containing part of some other bacterial genome. So this is the successful transduction where the bacteria has got piece of DNA from some other donor bacteria. There are also chances that this new entered DNA fragment gets degraded, right? Chances are there. So in that case, it is going to be unsuccessful gene transfer because the DNA fragment is degraded. Or there is also the possibility of survival of this DNA fragment where it is survived as a fragment but also it has not transferred in the recipient genome, okay? It is going to remain as it is and it might also get expressed. So there is this possibility of survival of this DNA fragment where it is not degraded, neither degraded, nor it is part of the recipient chromosome. And such transduction is called abortive transduction. And if you look at it, it contain a piece of uh, DNA from other bacteria. So it is partially deployed. We can call it partially deployed because it contains a fragment separately, a fragment of chromosome from other donor bacteria. So this is what happens in generalized transduction. And now I will tell you why it is called generalized. Because we just saw that when the packaging is happening, randomly any piece of bacterial DNA which can fit into the coat gets packed. There is no specificity as in what part of bacterial genome can get packed. Any fragment or you know any random part of the bacterial uh, chromosome is getting packed inside the viral coat and that is why it is called generalized transduction. There is no specific portion of bacterial genome that is getting packed. Okay, now let's move on to the second type uh, that is the specialized transduction. So the second type of transduction is called specialized or restricted transduction and that occurs during the lysogenic cycle. Now we know what happens in lysogenic cycle. Uh, the viral DNA that has entered would get integrated into the host chromosome. So from here integration part we will continue. So once the viral uh, DNA has integrated into the host chromosome, it can remain silent for a long period of time. 
but once it gets activated it is going to get uh, released from the host chromosome and sometimes there can be improper excision as in like the excision may not be exactly at the integration site if you guys remember in conjugation we talked about f prime cell the same thing was happening the plasmid release is not exact and it takes up by mistake some part of the bacterial genome exactly the same thing is happening over here when this piece of viral dna is getting released from the bacterial uh, genome the excision is not proper so what happens is it would take up some part of the bacterial genome and it will leave behind some part of the viral genome okay as a result you are going to have something like this a viral particle that has got some part of the bacterial genome and it has of course left behind some of its own genome now after excision what will happen it will undergo replication it is going to degrade all the host chromosome and it is going to replicate its dna now this dna is containing the a bacterial chromosome also so all the copies would have portion of bacterial chromosome it will get assembled packed into the coat along with the viral genome bacterial genome has also got packed now the same thing it can reinfect some other host once it is in the host cell again it is going to reintegrate itself in the bacterial chromosome but but now as you can see this bacteria recipient bacteria has got its own genome it has also got the viral genome and it has also got some part of the uh, donor bacterial genome so that's what is happening in the specialized transduction now why is it called specialized or restricted transduction now as you can see over here when the excision happens it is always the uh, bacterial dna that is close to the integration site that is going to get picked up that's what was happening in f prime also right the bacterial dna that is close to the integration site always used to get picked up because it is an error of improper excision so, so the genes that are close to the integration site always gets picked up so it is very very specific the, the uh, bacterial uh, chromosome that is getting picked up is always specific or is always restricted to the site where the integration occurs it is always that because it's improper excision simple to understand because of that it is called specialized or restricted transduction now from the name also you can understand specialized or restricted near the integration site integration occurs only in lysogenic cycle so that means this is the type of uh, transduction that happens during lysogenic cycle generalized any piece of dna can get packed so it has to be the lytic cycle now so here when i was talking about the generalized transduction here i i said this was similar to transformation right integration or degradation and all there is one very important difference between uh, transformation and transduction over here is in transformation we had seen that the uh, naked piece of dna is taken up by a cell and it is always a single strand of dna that is taken up by a cell right it it is going to degrade one a strand and it is going to take up only a single strand in case of transduction over here when a gene is transferred through a virus it is always double stranded okay the dna is always double stranded that has been transferred and that is going to get integrated that's very important to remember so that's all i think it's really easy and very interesting to understand what is transduction generalized and specialized and the difference between them so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new videos every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning